All right, so let's let's uh, let's get started. So we're obviously we're talking about um, cardiovascular health. Are we good? All right, we'll just wait until you guys are good. Thank you. So how many of you guys know someone, or maybe you yourself, who suffered from heart disease? By a show of hands. Okay. Know anybody else? Know anyone suffered like whether it be cardiovascular disease? high blood pressure, whatever it might be. So look around for a second, look around the room. So almost every hand is up, you can put your hands down. So the reason why I asked that question is because at the end of the day, it's still the number one killer in this country, is heart disease. So what I really wanna um, really talk to everybody about tonight is the whole idea that not only can you prevent it, but you can reverse it. You can reverse heart disease. You can reverse plaque in the arteries. You can reverse high blood pressure, okay? Also, there's a lot of uh, mystery around cholesterol, for example, right? How many people think that cholesterol is bad? Show of hands. Yeah, because that's what you've been taught, okay? So I'm gonna demystify that tonight. So I may shake some of your paradigms. Everything I have is referenced, okay? So if you ever want the references, I can give them to you. But at the end of the day, there's a, there's a certain premise that you have to understand about how your body heals and functions. And so if you understand that, we're gonna talk about this in a second, then all of this will seem possible. You're gonna say, well, of course my body can heal from heart disease. Of course my body can heal from, can reverse plaque. But you have to understand how the body start, how the body functions. So let's talk a little bit about who we are, Max Living. So who's new to Max Living? Show of hands. I've never seen you before, sir, so I'm assuming that you're new to Max Living. Anybody else? Okay, so, and then some of you just became patients. So, I've been part of this organization called Max Living Now for about 10 years, 11 years, actually 12 years. 09 is when I became a part of it. And so what Max Living is, is really an organization of, uh, of like-minded doctors and their support staff. So we're all chiropractors, but we're really holistic um, doctors. And we came, we, came, we came together around the idea that we believe that people should be able to, give, to be given the chance to be in charge of their health. We call it health freedom. We believe that you have an, inc an incredible ability for your body to heal and function. That's what we believe. So we want to be able, be able to empower our communities. That's what it's all about. We want people to live their God-given potential. Does that sound like a good idea? Amen. Yeah. Amen. But to do that, you have to understand what health is. You have to understand how the body heals and functions. So what you see on that map is currently all of the max living offices are around the country. So even here in, in this area, we have like maybe three or so that, you know, within a, a few miles of each other. And so we're spreading quickly, which is awesome, but I don't think we have enough. Now, in terms of our personal mission, um, our purpose, you know, as a global organization, we want to be the experts or the go-to when it comes to natural healthcare, okay? But I want to tell you a little bit about my vision, our vision here at Adio. We were talking about this. Every Monday, we, we do a, a staff meeting after the morning shift. And uh, this is something that God laid on my heart years ago. I used to work in another office. And for me, who's heard of the Blue Zone before? Nobody? Okay, a couple of you. So the Blue Zone is an, are areas of pockets around the world where you have large numbers of centenarians, people who routinely live to 100 years old, right? And so they call it the Blue Zone, and they, they wrote a book about this, and I think there's some documentaries about it. And really what they're asking is, why are these people so healthy? And it comes down to the lifestyle choices. Now, most people think it's because of what they eat and exercise. You're right, that is a part of it. But a big part of it is mindset. It's how they approach life. It's the value that they place on relationships and families. Right? That's all part of it. So for me, I've always envisioned that uh, if God placed me in a community, uh, practically speaking, I believe that anyone in the 5 to 10 mile radius should be part of what we call a, a max living zone. You guys, you understand what I'm saying? So it should be that people, like the, the, the news agencies, come down here and go, there's something wrong in this area because these people seem to have less heart disease, lower blood pressure rates, lower rates of cancer than the rest of the country. Who would like to be a part of that community? Everybody say yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, right? And I, I'd like it to be, no offense to anyone who works in a pharmaceutical uh, uh, drugstore, but I'd like it to be where um, the, the, uh, the drugstores start complaining because sales are down because they're not selling as many medications. Again, if you have a relative that works at the CVS, I apologize, right? 
But does that mean cousin that works right across the street at the Walgreens? That's what we need. We need to stop having more on opposing corners. I mean, there's, we're selling so many drugs. They're everywhere. Well, there's only one way to stop that. It's to stop what? Demand. That's it. Right? If you want to stop supply, you stop demand. How do you stop demand? Education. Education. Right? But education and information alone doesn't change anything. Right? Information has to lead to what? Transformation. In other words, you got to do something. You got to take some action steps. But that's my vision. That in a five to ten mile radius and expand, that lot, like, people are so healthy that they're, they're, they're coming down to do a 60 minute special. Why are these people so healthy? It's because of the choices that we make and the lifestyle. And then we can be an example to the rest of the country. Right? How, who would like to be a part of that vision? Right? Absolutely. We're just looking for people who want to be on board with that vision. Right? Right, team? Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. So let's look at 2020. 2020 was an interesting year, wasn't it? Right? We had what? Fear, doubt, quarantine. So fear dominated 2020. Let's face it. So now in 2021, it's time for hope. You see? The problem is, is that during that time when we were, we were afraid and, and scared, let's face it, as a nation we were, that something like heart disease didn't take a backseat. I know it seems as though heart disease went away during COVID, but it didn't. It continued to escalate. Are right, you guys understand? And when you look at what happened during that time, 65% of Americans, what does it say there? Took time off from their workout routine. Now that's mainly because a lot of gyms were closed. But let's face it, how many of you, if you're honest, worked out less? Okay, what else, did, what else increased during that ate time? More. You it's ate more. No, not you, not you ate more, ate more what? <laughs> so I remember when this thing first started, I remember walking to a grocery store, and listen, judge me if you will, I can't help it. Being a holistic doctor, I notice things. Like I notice what's in people's carts. Sorry, <laughs> judge me if you will, right? But I notice more fast food, comfort food. Because sure. when people are feeling down and afraid and less dare, less dare I say depressed, you go to comfort food, which there's a reason why you go to sugar, by the way, and I'll explain that later. So I'm thinking, here you are at home, afraid of being um, infected by a virus that you're afraid is gonna kill you, but unfortunately, the fear and the doubt and the depression and the anxiety and the lifestyle and the lack of exercise and the poor food actually made you more susceptible to the very thing that you're afraid of in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Question, did alcohol sales go up or down? Oh. Oh. Way up, right? It went up by like 40 something percent. Did you put your hand up? Are you responsible for that? I drink and I drink. Well, that's the thing. You're right, people who don't drink, drink. I did. Right? And I usually have two drinks a year, and I was having... Two drinks a day? No. <laughs> I don't want to put words in your mouth, right? But, we were but, having fun. But you know, the, the thing is, is it, it, because it's, it's like, hey, you just want to escape. And that's what happened during mm -hmm. that time. They weren't making people wear masks in those liquor stores either. You just walk in there and ask whatever. <laughs> well, they also didn't close them. Mm -hmm. yeah, they right? Close them. They closed church closed liquor stores. stores didn't. But I'll digress. Uh -huh. That's not why we're here. <laughs> Any church folks in here? Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 And amen. All right. So here we go. So this is what happened. Heart disease started to increase. Okay? So let's, let's talk about, about this a little bit. Um, is the future bright right now? Yes. It can be, but I put a, we put a question mark there for a reason. Because let me read a couple statistics for you. When I take my glasses off, don't laugh at me. I need my vocals, I don't have them yet, okay? So here's what happened during that time. Um, according to the American Heart Association, they say that by 2020, about 40.5% of the, of the US will have some kind of uh, cardiovascular disease. That's two out of five people. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. I left him out, five. So that means if I count five people, right, two of you will have heart disease. Who will it be? I already got it, so I know. Right? Okay, so he's, born with that's one. I was born with Can I get one more person? You, you see my point? So at the end of the day, it's, I'm not saying that you, that I'm wishing that on you, but statistically speaking, two out of five, and that's growing. Let's talk about money. Um, in the 10 years between 2010 and 2030, the medical costs of cardiovascular disease are estimated to triple 
uh, in, uh, totaling an increase from $272.5 billion to $818 billion. So we never think about that, but who is that going to cost? Us. It's going to cost, cost us. So even if you don't have cardiovascular disease, it affects you. It affects you financially, and chances are you know someone that you love that have it. Okay? So here's, you've got to change your mindset. So I'm going to skip this because I think everybody understands that the heart's amazing, right? It's, a, it's, it's the size of a fist, but it, it, it pumps gallons of blood throughout the whole uh, body, right? It's an amazing organ. But here's the deal. Let's talk a little bit about mindset. Um, it's all based on what you, how you believe the body works and how it's organized. See, if you, do you believe that a five-year-old is genetically designed to have cholesterol, high cholesterol and plaque it in the arteries? No. no. Do you believe that there's something that God put in your body called cholesterol that your body naturally makes that by design is there to hurt you? No. Right? So if you don't believe that, then we have to have a different explanation for why we have something like high cholesterol. You guys with me? So we understand that the body is self-healing, self-regulating, self-adapting, right? It can do that. That's not 100% true because it's not just the body. There's a power or an innate intelligence in the body that runs the body. We never think about that innate intelligence, but think about it. Your heart's beating right now. You don't have to tell your heart to beat. There is an intelligence there. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. you, you can have, maybe you just ate before you came and you're digesting food. There's an intelligence there. You don't even have to think about it. There's an intelligence that allows that to happen. Not to mention your ability to have emotions and to love and to hate and to laugh and to cry and to think and to process and to plan. There's an intelligence there. Does that make sense, everybody? So that, that intelligence is what's at play when it comes to your overall health. So as chiropractors, we understand and honor that intelligence within the body. We understand that God has put that intelligence there, and that intelligence is perfect. And that intelligence from day one, from the time you're conceived, two, set, two cells coming together nine months later to form, what is it, uh, 72 trillion cells, right? That come together to form you with a consciousness. So that intelligence is what keeps you alive and keeps you healthy your entire life. But what does that have to do with health? All right, so I want to talk about that here in a little bit. So with us, the five essentials of max living, it's a vehicle, right? It's not a treatment, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. So you'll hear us talk about this all the time. People walk into this office because they want to be treated for symptoms and disease and aches and pains. But the irony is, is that in order to get you out of that place, it's really more about changing your lifestyle. It's about working with the power that God put in the body to heal the body. And that's where the five essentials came in. Now, we didn't invent the five essentials, but we honor and respect the five essentials. Okay? So, let's talk about what we need to do to heal the heart. So, there's four things. The first thing we need to do is identify causes. So, no matter why, what brings you into the office, we're always going, what's the cause? Because your body wasn't designed to break down. It wasn't designed to have arthritis. It wasn't designed to have cancer so, or heart disease. So why are these things happening? You've got to find the cause. The second thing is, is that we have to remove the interference. It goes back to what I said a minute ago. If you understand that your body is designed to heal itself and there's a life force in it, there must be something interfering with it, right? So you've got to find out what's the interference. Step number two. Step number three is you have to move strategically. And then step number four, you gotta balance the nervous system. So are you guys ready? Okay, so what is heart disease? What is the cause of heart disease? What do you guys think? Toxins in our yeah. environment, the food we eat. Yeah, it's lifestyle, food, diet, right, nutrition, but there's actually more. So let's back up. What are, what's one of the biggest players in, in heart disease? Stress. Stress, okay. Cholesterol. People talk about cholesterol. So let's talk about cholesterol. Who knows what cholesterol is? Right? You hear about good, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol? Go ahead. It's, a, it's well, your brain is made up a lot of cholesterol, mm -hmm. and cholesterol is in your body so that when you, if there's damage in your body, your body sends cholesterol to repair that mm -hmm. damage, and that's why your arteries and stuff, where they get clogged with cholesterol because you have inflammation in your body, and it goes there to repair that, and so you get a buildup of cholesterol in your veins, and it's bad, mm -hmm. and that's bad, but that's your body's reaction to something that, 
that shouldn't be there. That right. The inflammation should not be there. So you're exactly right. So in its purest form, he's spot on, right? Good, that's good. So, so first of all, in its purest form, it's this soft, waxy um, substance. Okay? That's number one. That's 80% of your cholesterol comes from your liver. It doesn't come from your diet. So when people say you have high cholesterol, you need to fix your diet. Well, hold on a second. 80% of it is coming from your own body, producing it. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, cholesterol, as Philip said, is there to heal your body. So what causes high cholesterol? Well, first of all, you've got the HDL and the LDL. So I want you to take this out of your vocabulary, this whole, this whole idea of a good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. I want you to remove that. Here's why. It's not good or bad, it's just necessary cholesterol. Now, there's a reason why they call it good and bad, and we'll talk about that. What's that? Both. Both of them are necessary. So here's how it works. So what happens is, is that, as Philip said, cholesterol is the body's repair um, substance. So when the body um, is, when there's inflammation in the body, right, and inflammation can come from a number of things, nutrition, trauma, the cholesterol levels, the liver will produce more cholesterol to heal the inflammation. So it's kind of like if you had a, a cut in your hand, the cholesterol, its job is to go and wound heal. Okay, so that's number one. The low density, or the LDL, its job is to take the cholesterol from the, li from the uh, liver and take it to the cells. That's the purpose of the cholesterol, okay? So if you have high LDL, guess why you would have high LDL? Because you have had high what? Inflammation. inflammation, right? So inflammation is the problem, not, not the LDL. Furthermore, what happens is, is that when the LDL leaves, your, leaves the liver, it's nice and big and fluffy. So the more um, triglycerides, right? You've heard of triglycerides, right? Triglycerides are, are, are three fats together, and a lot of it comes from their nutrition, so the sugars that we eat, or the processed foods. And so when that damage, when you put that in your body, you have more triglycerides. So the LDL car carries um, cholesterol, and it carries triglycerides and it's taking it out to the cells. And as you said, every single cell in the body needs cholesterol. Your brain needs cholesterol. Cholesterol is used to make many hormones like estrogen, kind of important. Progesterone, kind of important for childbirth, right? Testosterone, men, kind of important. It also um, produces a hormone called DEHA. So there's all these different hormones and chemicals in our bodies that are produced by um, cholesterol. Cortisone. Cortisone is really important for energy production. That's produced from cholesterol. So when you start to lower your cholesterol, you're affecting many different systems in your body. So believe it or not, more people die every single year with normal and below normal cholesterol than high cholesterol. Because cholesterol is not the problem, it's the inflammation that's the problem. You guys with me so far? So what happens is when that LDL is released from the liver and it travels through your body, it's nice and big and fluffy because it has all that cargo, right? Because what happens is cholesterol and triglycerides being, being fats, they don't, oil and wa water doesn't mix, right? They don't mix. So because of that, the fats need to be carried throughout the body. That's why you have LDL. But what happens is, is as the LDL is dropping off fats throughout the body, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller because it's, it's unloading cargo. What happens is the very small particles of LDL, and the longer it circulates, the smaller it gets, okay? And it circulates for a long time because it has a lot of what? Triglycerides, you guys with me? And you have a lot of triglycerides because of what you, someone finished my sentence, eat. I'm trying to show you a pattern. Yeah. So I eat poorly, I have more triglycerides. Because I have more triglycerides, I need more LDL, right? The LDL folds around your body longer. The longer it folds around your body, the smaller it gets. The smaller it gets, the easier it is to get lodged into the lining of your blood vessels. And as it gets locked into the lining of your blood vessels, it becomes oxidized. Who knows what that means? So close, think oxidation is the best example. If you've ever bitten an apple and you leave it on the counter, what happens to the apple? 
brown. It starts to turn brown. See, thank you, because of the oxygen, it's called oxidization, right? It's like a basketball map. If you leave it outside for a very long time, it'll um, start to, like, rust. It's, it's kind of like rusting, yeah. but with other material. Exactly. You got it. So this is exactly what happens in the body. I love it. He pops up, gives us some wisdom. Go back. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Good job. But that's what happens. Hence the term antioxidants. So when you oxidize those small ma uh, molecules, they produce free radicals. And free radicals further damage your, your tissue lining. Is this making sense? Yeah. So that's why you need antioxidants. But antioxidants, that's not getting to the cause. The cause is are the things that we choose to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Now the purpose of LDL is now to go and get the cholesterol that's being recycled and take it back to the liver. So that's why it's called a good cholesterol because it's recycling the cholesterol. But you see how they're both necessary. So your cells wouldn't get cholesterol without LDL. So you've got to be careful when you lower it at the, uh, the uh, cholesterol level and you lower LDLs. Does that make sense? So and you can actually get tested to see which ones you have. Do you have a lot of the fluffy ones or the small ones? You can be tested for that. Any questions? Clear? Okay, so I already covered that. We can skip that. So this study really just reiterated what I said. This study talked about the fact that the LDL um, is not necessarily bad. And then when you do decrease LDL, by the way, they show that people have things like brain issues. Why? Because of what I just said, right? If you lower the LDL, you have less cholesterol going to different parts of the body that need it, including the brain. So that's what happens. Another thing that people get is that uh, you get more infections because cholesterol and LDL actually helps to fight bacterial infections. It helps to support your immune system, right? So, so really the problem is, is what we call metabolic inflexibility. What that means is, is that many of us, because of our lifestyle choices, including the stressors, our bodies aren't very flexible, right? That goes all the way down to the blood, the blood vessels. They become less flexible. We can't adapt very well. And so if your body can't adapt, it breaks down faster. And when your body breaks down, that's where disease comes in, okay? So it's really called metabolic flexibility. So, no questions? Okay, so let's talk about um, poor habits, high HDL. So let's talk about some of the things that can cause um, LDL to increase. I gave you a, a few. So what do you guys think? Sugar, what else? Fighting. What's that? Greasy food? I didn't hear what you said. Fine food, greasy food. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, the raw kinds. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the deal. Here's something about oils. There are good oils and bad oils. There are good fats and bad fats. However, when you heat an oil, it's bad. No matter how good it is to start with, it's bad. Oils were not meant to be heated. So when you heat them, they become rancid. When they become rancid, you're producing free radicals in the body. Does that make sense? So, so yes, you're right. To toxins, that's another thing. Where can we find toxins? Everywhere. Everywhere, right? The air that we breathe, what we put on our skin, what we drink, what we eat, personal care products, okay? Processed foods, hot dogs, hamburgers, sorry. Unless you get them nitrate free, which is better, but those things are dangerous too. Um, what about physical activity, lack of exercise? Believe it or not, that can cause your LDL to raise if you're not being physically active, okay? What if we, we know that physical exercise can actually increase HDL and help to lower LDL, okay? We know that weight is a big risk factor. The heavier you are, the more, the more overweight you are, you increase your risk for uh, CBD, cardiovascular disease, right? Men, we develop cardiovascular disease 10 to 15 years earlier than women. No one knows why, there's many theories, but we do, right? So, what's the answer? So when people have high cholesterol, what's the answer usually? To feel high in exercise. Right? Well, that's, the, that's what the answer should be. Statins is usually what it's statins. So, um, so one of the founders of Max Living, Greg Lohman, years ago, he had Lyme disease. And if you know anything about Lyme disease, it can attack pretty much every organ in your body. And one of the things that they found, right, because it causes inflammation in the body, 
So when they tested, tested his cholesterol, do you think it was high or low? It was high. It's 400. That's very high, right? So now, if, if you don't understand this principle that cholesterol is not the problem, they're going to put you on statin drugs, which, of course, he didn't do because he understands this. He got to the source to cause, fixed the Lyme disease, and now his cholesterol levels did what? It went down. Okay? So when you take a statin, a statin drug, it, it inhibits the enzyme that makes cholesterol in the liver. So what are some, some of the side effects of statin drugs? Because they are. There's a bunch of them. I'll kidney, tell you. Kidney. Kidney, kidney um, problems. Muscle aches. Muscle. Yeah. Right? That's one of the biggest ones. So I remember years ago, my neighbor, um, when we first moved in, and he found out that I was a chiropractor, we started talking about some of these principles. And he, would, he, he told me that he, had, um, he was on statin drugs. And he kept on tell, telling his doctor that he was experiencing cramping in one of his mm -hmm. legs. And then when he would climb the stairs in his house, one leg was weaker. And he started to see that it was shrinking. So he was having muscle atrophy, see? And so he complained to his doctor, he never changed it. Eventually I convinced him to get off the statin drugs. But the problem is, is that when, the reason why that happens is because there's an enzyme called co uh, coenzyme Q10. And coenzyme Q10 is really, really important in cardiac and skeletal muscles. And so it turns out that when you take statin drugs, you actually deplete, deplete that. And so as you deplete that, you actually start to weaken muscles. So it can actually weaken the heart when you take statin drugs, as well as cause uh, muscle wa wasting. One of the other things that it does, it causes dysfunction, a certain kind of dysfunction. You guys follow me? Okay, All right, we have, we have kids in the audience, so. So here's the deal, right? So men, I'm talking to us. So it can cause back dysfunction. What happens to be the second leading drug that's being sold today? <laughs> the solution, right? Yeah. So this. Yeah, and that with the yeah. So one drug causes it, and then oh, I have a solution for it. <clears throat> right? See how that works? Oh, wow. So yeah, oh wow is right. So this so and there's many, many more um, side effects that you can have. So what are some of the solutions that you can have? So let's talk about um, supporting nutrients. You know, I used to, I'll be honest with you, I used to be of the mindset, and I still to some degree, but it's changing quite a bit. I used to be of the mindset that, listen man, you don't need supplements. Just eat healthy and you're fine. But the reality is, is that our food supply isn't very good. There is a, I forget, to, I think it's called Kiss the Ground, there's a documentary on Netflix that I watched. I think that's what it's called. And it talks about regenerative farming. And really and truly what's happening is that because of farming practices in this country since World War II, as well as government subsidies and involvement, uh, the quality of food is horrible. So even when we think that we're eating healthy, unfortunately, we're not getting all the nutrients that we need. So the reality is, is that we do need supplementation. You know, and it, and it was really tough for me to kind of pivot on that because I'm thinking, hey man, God put food in the earth for us, just eat that and we'll be fine. And you should eat it, but the point is that we need supplements. So there's several nutrient, uh, nutrients that can help you, like plant steroids. You know, the reality is, is that, you know, I, I'm not a, a vegan necessarily, a vegetarian, um, but people who are vegetarians tend to have lower markers when it comes to heart disease because these plant sterol, uh, sterols help. They help to lower blood pressure, they help to lower inflammation in the body. That's number one. Curcumin, there's been a ton of research done on curcumin. Its ability to reduce inflammation, its ability to help regulate a lot of these hormones. And uh, you know, being from the Caribbean originally, you know, we, we, we use a lot of spices and curcumin is one of them, turmeric. Um, if you've ever, ever had a curry dish, right? Curry chicken, curry goat, and curry, whatever the week you like curry chicken. See, I'm liking you more and more, man. <laughs> so those things are very beneficial. Um, and then you have things like red yeast rice. You about to ask a question? Turmeric, is that a blood thinner? It, it's not specifically a blood thinner, but a lot of times they'll tell you that if you are on blood thinners, that you shouldn't take it. Oh, I've heard some people say double. Yeah. Double dipping. Okay, I have somebody in my life that's 
having a real problem mm -hmm. with bleeding under the skin because they And they take, take a lot of it? They take that's why? They take a blood thinner and started on turmeric about, and I was just about to start on it, on the turmeric, and then I got scared about it because, but I don't take blood thinner. Well, guess what I'm gonna say to the person yeah. taking blood thinners? Stop right? taking blood thinner. Well, I, oh, I can say, I'm not going to say stop. <laughs> I might think that, but I can say that. But that's not even the solution. Why are they taking blood thinners? Because heart problems. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Get to the cause. Right, of course. The viscosity of the blood is probably not very good. It's very sluggish. That person, I guarantee, I don't know who this person is. I guarantee you, you can just kind of um, confirm they probably don't have the healthiest lifestyle. The healthiest of lifestyles. They may now, they may have it now, mm -hmm. but they didn't before. Am I right? That is correct. Okay. Well, there you go. You got to get to the cause. Mm -hmm. So turmeric is not the villain, right? It's the blood thinners, and the blood thinners really aren't the villain. It's the heart disease. It's not the heart disease. Listen, the body isn't dumb. The body knows exactly what it's doing. It does the right thing at the right time for the right reason. You didn't go back to the cholesterol. The high cholesterol is trying to save your life because the inflammation can kill you, right? So now you start to decrease that cholesterol without getting to the cause. That's why just as many people die with normal and below normal, uh, more actually die with normal and below normal cholesterol because you haven't gone to the problem and you, you added uh, fuel to the fire, right? Red yeast, uh, rice is another um, supplement from Asia. A lot of you guys might have heard of that heard about it and it helps to make your blood vessels more flexible, right? It helps with your circulation. And then of course it's co uh, coenzyme Q10 that helps to support the muscle, the heart muscles and your skeletal muscles. And a lot of the supplements that we have will include a lot of these things in there, okay? So this is two of them, right? We have to kill uh, the enzyme uh, CoQ10 with uh, lipoic, lipoic acid. You've got vitamin D and probiotics. So, you know, we try to put all that stuff in there. So here's one thing about clacking that a lot of people don't understand. So where does plaquen come from? Who can tell me? Or what have you been taught about plaquen? Build up. Build up of what? Build up. Cholesterol. cholesterol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not true. It's not. So plaquen is really an immuno-inflammatory problem. It's inflammation, right? And it's damage to the immune system. And what happens is, is that the response from this inflammation causes fatty streaks to form in your blood vessels. And that's what causes the plaque. And it, it increases inflammatory markers called cytokines. So once again, we've been taught that it's the cholesterol building up and kicking up in your blood vessels, and that's not true. It's the damage from the inflammation leaving fatty streaks that cause plaque. That's kind of good to know, right? They don't want you to know that though, because they want you to keep taking the drug. Because the right. more drugs you take, the sicker you get. You keep going to them. They keep having to go back. They and want you to be empowered. Money. And it really goes back to like, it really, what is it? Money. 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 And it really goes back once again to um, how we think, right? Here's the deal. I, I'm pro health. I don't have the energy to be anti medicine. You guys understand? Like that's just, like, let's be pro health. However, the problem is, is that it comes from two different paradigms. One paradigm says this, it says, it's called genetic determinism. And it comes from the assumption that genes control life. So if something's wrong with you, there's something wrong with your genes. And if there's something wrong with your genes, lifestyle has minimal impact on it. And so if your body breaks down, we need to give it drugs. So if, and everything is done myopically, what that means is, is that, okay, if your blood pressure is high, we know high blood pressure isn't necessarily good, even though I'll challenge that in a second, isn't necessarily good because it can cause a stroke and cause damage. So what we need to do, the problem is, right? The problem is high blood pressure. So the solution is to do what? Lower the blood pressure. That's what the drug's there for. You see the difference? But if you ask the question, well, wait a second, why the high blood pressure is there for a reason? Why do you have high blood pressure? What's going wrong in the body? You get a totally different answer. So unless you ask that question, you'll never come to a lifestyle change, right? If you ask the question is, 
well, how can we lower blood pressure? Not why is it there. The question is how can we lower it? How can we lower this? How can we raise that? That's why you end up with the medication. So you can't really blame medicine because that's the paradigm that they have. Right? They would have to change their paradigm. Which, by the way, years ago, that paradigm was smashed because genetic determinism isn't true. Because genes can't express themselves. Genes have to be turned on, so to speak, by our lifestyle choices, right? So it's different. Does that make sense, everybody? So it's not gene expression. That's, it's not genetic determinism that's the problem. It's your lifestyle choices. So fat is a scapegoat. We already talked about that, right? There's, it's not the fat. Right? Fat doesn't, fat, first of all, fat doesn't, who, who thinks that fat makes you fat? Okay, good. Because it used to be, right? Mm -hmm. Do we not think, that you, you guys laugh, but it wasn't that long ago. Right? It wasn't that long ago you guys say, hey, you know, I, I need to lose weight, let me cut my fat. Sure. Yeah, what happened over the, the, the last several decades when we cut fat? What happened? We got fatter. We got fatter. <laughs> Why did we get fatter? <laughs> We're eating all the processed food that on the back it's full of sugar and on the back it's it. fat free but it's full of sugar that's, that's what makes you fat gives you fatty liver gives you every inflammation sugar is the, one of the most horrible things you can put in your body so sugar. there's three things that cause fatty liver sugar is one of them right medications is a second just so you know and alcohol right so when you have a fatty liver to your point it's sluggish so when it's sluggish you're going to gain weight right not to mention the fact that it's also going to affect your, uh, your, your cardiovascular system and cause heart disease. So fat is not the problem. You want to have healthy fats. Those are your fish oils, your omega-3s, your coconut oil, right? There's some oils are better than others, right? So people ask, you know, what about, you know, uh, uh, some of the seed oils? Well, some of the seed oils are good. It's better than vegetable oil, but it's not as good as coconut oil, right? So you just have to know they are good fats and bad fats. That's number one. Secondly, once you figure out what the cause is, lifestyle, then we've got to remove the interference. So what does that look like? Well, we have to put healthy fats in there. It's <laughs> simple. So are you eating enough fish? Are you supplementing with omega-3s? When you cook, do you cook? What, do you, what kind of oil do you cook with? Are you still cooking with vegetable oil? Are you still using margarine as opposed to butter? So I feel like more and more as we do these talks, like 10 years ago, people would go, <gasps> Margarine, butter, butter is bad. I think most people understand that butter is good now. So good, we're getting Grass something. Grass-fed organic butter. Grass-fed organic fat. Butter is best, right? Healthy oils. Do you guys understand why? Why vegetable oils would be bad? Okay, good. What about canola oil? Where's the canola plant? Exactly, right? <laughs> so be honest, who thought there might have been a canola plant? Thank you for being honest, right? <laughs> it actually stands for the Canadian, what's it stand for? Canadian Oil. Canadian so, Oil. You taught me that. Yeah, I, so, yeah, I forget what it is, right? Yeah. So it's, it's actually an acronym for something. Mm -hmm. It's not even real. It's made from rapeseed, mm -hmm. right? But rapeseed oil is probably not the best marketing, no. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and so it's been processed so much that it smells rancid. So they have to keep processing it, and then they, they change, they call it canola oil. So it's not something that you want to put in your body. So if you're using canola oil right now, stop it, right? If you want to cook or fry, where you shouldn't fry it, but if you are going to do it, use coconut oil because it's stable at higher heats. Olive oil is never meant to cook with, right? It's a cold oil, so it's better for salads. So you don't want to make eggs with, with uh, olive oil. So if you're doing that, stop it. Right? If you're going to make eggs, use some butter. Tastes better anyways. Or coconut, okay. oil. Or coconut oil. If you use it in margarine, stop, stop it. it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So listen, question. What's another name for curcumin? What else is it found in? Who said it first? Give this woman a gift. We have a gift for you. <laughs> All right, we, this is where I get to see who's paying attention. All right, true or false, plaquing in the arteries is caused by fatty streaks. False. True. Who said true? Well, who said false? All right, true, right here. Get this woman a gift. You can See, you guys gotta pay attention. You didn't think this was gonna be a quiz. Let me find another question here. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Oh, this is a good one. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. 
Ah, this is a good one. LDL. Is it better to have big LDL particles or small LDL particles? Big. big. Yeah, who said it first? Big. Oh, I, you can't have another gift. Yeah. I gotta give it to the second person. All right, Violet. What are we, what are we giving away? Uh, we had a curcumin, we got chocolate, this is the vitamin D. Who said Lily's chocolate? We have lots of chocolate, so you might want to listen. Ooh. Yeah, chocolate is good. I was just looking at Lily's chocolate and scraps, too. Did you say chocolate? Yeah, chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. But, no, but it, there's, no, there's no sugar. Yeah, right. That Lily's that you gave us for Mother's Day. Oh, my God, it was so good. It was good, right? Did you go out and buy some little piece? No, but I'm good. I was talking with something else, and they didn't have one. I can chop for being good with no sugar. It, it is great. It's it's great. great. I'll tell you what, you want to know how you find out? Get a question right, and you'll get one. <laughs> 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 what do you got there for me? I can answer your question. I've had root beer that tastes good with no sugar. It tastes exactly the same. I've had many things with no sugar in it. Where did you come from? <laughs> simple what should I eat food that got placed on the planet to sustain us not food that's made as processed there are some specific foods that are really really good for your heart health beets mm. who likes to, yeah see Ooh, that's I, love love I love it I love beets we beets love are it. great for your heart right who hates beets <laughs> all right so for those of you who hate beets we have a supplement that has um, beets in it right so you can take that um, okay everybody loves pomegranates right yes, yes. yes. pomegranates great for your heart Okay, what about garlic? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Garlic, great for your heart. Okay, so these are some of the really good things. Now, one of the reasons that some of those foods are really good is because they help to um, stimulate nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is a gas in, that's produced in your body, and it helps to keep your blood vessels very flexible so they don't get hard. So some of these foods will help to produce that. Um, also, you can do supplementation which again, for, uh, we have a product line or uh, different um, packages, I will, will say bundles, that specifically cover some of that. So we have a nitric oxide supplement, for example. But that's why, because it helps to, it helps to keep the, the blood vessels supple, and what happens is, is that when you reach, reach the age of 30, approximately, some of the precursors that you need to produce nitric oxide start to go down, see? So after a certain time, you need to make sure that you're, you're eating correctly so that you can boost that. And so if you don't like beets and you don't need pomegranates, then supplementation is a good thing. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So I love pomegranate juice. I don't know about you guys. Um, another supplement that's really good for that too is arginine, right, which is mm -hmm. amino acid. So arginine, L-arginine, which is something that we carry also. So nitric oxide. Um, we already covered supplements, but I do want to talk a little bit about high blood pressure. So with high blood pressure, it's not so much about the high blood pressure, it's actually the pulse pressure. What I mean by that is the difference between your systolic and diastolic. So the systolic is the top number, the diastolic is the bottom number. So let me explain. Let's say that your blood pressure was, you know, let's say it was 130 over 90. That's, so the, the, the pulse pressure is 40. It's the difference there, right? Mm. So let's say that that was a good pulse pressure. If someone had a high blood pressure now of, let's say, uh, 200, okay, over 160, it's the same thing. It's the same pulse pressure. So that's what really counts. So the higher that pulse pressure, the worse it is. Does that make sense? Mm. So that's why you because for some people, guess what? Your blood pressure may need to be a little bit higher than my blood pressure for your body. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's adaptive. Blood right. pressure is adaptive. It, when you do more, you need more blood pressure. Exactly. So if you have a situation where you have, you know, sometimes people are trying to artificially keep their blood pressure, you know, 120 over 70, mm -hmm. and, they, and you struggle. 
and then you end up going to the doctor and they put you on two or three different medications to try to keep your blood pressure there, maybe that's not where it should be. So the question is, what's the pulse pressure? What's the difference? So 130 over, let's say 90, may not be worse than 120 over 80. You guys see that? And again, there's so much research on this, you can go look it up. Anytime you wanna look up some of this stuff, go to PubMed, right? It's a, it's a, um, a library of research articles that's available to the public peer-reviewed articles. And you can just type this stuff in there and you'll learn more about it. So that's what you wanna look at. So for some of, you, some of you, you're struggling, you're on two or three different medications for blood pressure, that's why, right? You're, you're trying to accomplish something that can't be accomplished, right? And we know we talk about the silent killer um, being um, you know, a heart attack. So what are some of the uh, symptoms or the early warning signs? The arms, arms blood spots in the eyes, right? Um, dizziness, fatigue, nausea. nausea, right? These are some of the early warning signs. You know, so if you start to feel that stuff, don't dismiss it, right? Don't say, oh, I need to get more sleep, maybe. But once again, the answer is not to run out and take a bunch of medications. The answer is to say, okay, let me step back and examine my lifestyle, right? What am I doing wrong? What am I consuming too much of? Uh, or what is it that I should be eating or doing that I'm not, right? That's, what, that's the question that you always wanna ask yourself. And of course, we talked about the, uh, the pulse pressure there a second ago. Um, so some things that may help your blood pressure, okay? So people always wanna know, hey, what can I, what can I eat to help my blood pressure? So um, grapeseed extract has been shown clinically to help lower blood pressure. Um, Bonito peptide powder comes from dried fish. It's extracted from dried fish. And that's a, another supplement that we carry. And that actually helps to lower your blood pressure also. Um, L-arginine, um, L the amino acid, has been shown to, to lower your blood pressure by as, mu as much as 15 points. As a matter of fact, that may be on the low side, right? So there's little, there are things that you can do to reverse and lower your blood pressure out there. Does that make sense, everybody? So do you feel like you have a little bit more hope, like you don't have to be so stuck? What, what are you lowering? Are you lowering the top number to the bottom one, or are you lowering both sets? You're, it's gonna lower both sets, good question. Right, because it can't target it. Like you can't say, let me take this for my systolic and that for my diastolic. Really what you're doing here, this is what you're doing. You're giving the body what it needs. On some level, your body's missing those nutrients. Right? So you're giving the body what it needs so that the body can now properly regulate itself to reset it. So for some people, it's that systolic that needs to come down. For other people, it's the diastolic that needs to change. So innately, your body will know what to do, but you can't target it. There's also Question. something. So if you have, like, my blood pressure range between 118, 122, or 160. Taking amino acid, will that lower it? Great question. It may not for you. Because maybe that's your set. You don't need to. So that's a great question. It's very similar. We're going to talk about, about, the, about the nervous system here in a second. You know, there's a study that came out um, in 07, I think it was, where they, uh, they, it, was, it was done by a cardiologist and a chiropractor, and uh, Dr. Dick, Dick Holtz. And they did upper cervical sub, um, adjustments on patients. That's exactly what I was just going to say. You did, but I was surprised you hadn't said that yet because that's also proved over stuck was proven to lower blood pressure by as much as 15 points. Right. That cervical adjustment. Compared to two stat two of blood pressure medications. And when they looked at it down the road, did you guys hear what he said? So basically he said in this study that when they got the upper cervical adjustment, they were able to lower blood pressure in that one group by 15 points, and it stayed low, was that? No, go ahead, oh. when you're done. Oh, and it stayed, yeah, I mean, you can jump in. I was just gonna say, we have an old newsletter from that. It's probably from sometime last year or the year before, but if you want more information, I can find that newsletter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, talks about that stuff. And so what happened is it lowered it and kept it lower, uh, lower compared to the two blood pressure medications that people were taking. But watch this. The adjustment wasn't designed to lower the blood pressure. Suppose your blood pressure doesn't need to go down. Does it mean that I shouldn't adjust your atlas if it's subluxated? Right? I should adjust it, and guess what? It may be that your blood pressure goes up. 
It goes back to what I said at the beginning. There is an intelligence in your body that knows where you should be. So that's why for us as, as chiropractors, as principal chiropractors, it's never about the symptom. Never, ever, ever about the symptom. It's all about finding the interference and removing it and let the innate intelligence of the body do what it's supposed to do. So maybe your blood pressure should be higher. So maybe I don't want to lower your blood pressure. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, the symptom's just a clue. Yeah, so it's the same thing with taking, those, taking the amino acids, right? You're giving your body what it needs, and so it may not go ahead and lower that blood, that blood pressure. Okay, that's a good question. Mindy? Um, does any of this work for heart murmurs? Like, I'm on a blood pressure medicine. I have perfect blood pressure, mm -hmm. but it's to regulate a heart murmur. Okay. Is there anything I could do about getting off of that to regulate the heart murmur? Okay, so can I come back to that? Sure. Yeah. So, and I forgot the book back there. There's um, the paleocardiologist, Dr. Yeah. Wolfen. Yeah. He, Wolfson, yeah, he's a great guy. He spoke to our group a few years ago, and I have his book back there. So um, it's called The Paleocardiologist. So you guys should, yeah, it's, it's in my bag somewhere. He gives it away free on his website. All you gotta do is pay shipping. There you so go. It's like, it's like $4.95 or something like that. So, so it's, a, book. it's a good book. And I will tell you that my wife, for example, at one point in time had um, PVCs, so preventricular contractions. And you know she gets adjusted. She eats well. Thank you. And uh, you know, and you know, she. I'll be honest. We were freaking out a little bit. You know, to the point where she went to a cardiologist, and uh, um, you know, the cardiologist said, "Hey, you know, we've got to do this. We got to look at this." And if you look it up, you'll see that you know it could lead to a heart attack. Well, when at the seminar I spoke to him about it, and I forget some of the. I should have. This was an afterthought right now, but. There were some uh, supplements that he told her to get. Went away. Just like that. Right? One of the things that he always talks about, because for full disclosure, he's married to a chiropractor. He yeah. refers every single, and, 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 that, and by the way, because of his wife, that's why he, he really understood these principles. Right? Because she set them straight. And uh, he always sends all of his patients to a chiropractor. Right, we'll talk about this in a second as we close up here. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you can pass it around so people can uh, take a look at it, okay? So move, move strategically. What does that mean? So you gotta exercise. You have a genetic requirement to exercise, okay? I don't care if you walk, but do something. Because if you live a sedentary lifestyle, he, he, he's delivering something, he can bring it in. Yeah. No, that's my son. Oh, that's your son? Oh, I saw the <laughs> FedEx. I thought it was, okay. Does your son work in No, then it's like, okay, so cool. <laughs> so, so what was I talking about? Exercise. Yeah, exercise. exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So, I need some healthy fats. Yeah. <laughs> so with exercise, you have a genetic requirement to exercise. Now, there are actually some exercises that are better than others for your heart. It used to be that we were taught that if you have, if recovering from a heart attack or heart conditions of some kind, that you shouldn't do strenuous activity. That's no longer the case at all. So they would suggest that you do just do cardio, just walking. But now they realize that if you actually do what's called metabolic conditioning, where you're doing a high intensity workout, but for a short period of time, it's actually more beneficial for your heart than if you were to do like long, low intensity exercise for a long time, right? And People don't think about this, but when you have people who are like marathon runners, do you know that like after a marathon, for example, their health isn't very good? Yeah. You know, damage to their heart because of the oxidative stress from running all the time. A lot of them after exercising or doing a marathon are actually more susceptible to infections. They get sick a lot. So you don't see that behind the scenes, but it's not good for your body to sustain that type of workout. So the high intensity, short duration workouts are the best ones to do. So that's where Max T3 comes in, right? So Max T3, the T3 really stands for type, you, you can send it back up here if you want. You can pass it back up to the front. So the whole idea with Max T3 is to vary the type of exercise that you do, the tempo at which you do it, and the timing of it. So that your body never gets used to one activity. So in Max C3, if you've ever done it with us, um, some of you have been around for a while, uh, you know, it's, 
we would change up what you did. You would dial in different things. So for example, one day you might do a, a workout for six minutes. And I love it when people say, man, you can't get a good workout in six minutes. Well, that's usually because people are thinking treadmill. But you do six minutes of burpees, you'll change your mind, right? Hey, that was like one minute of burpees. Oh, one minute of burpees, right? Um, so you can, you can change the time. So if you want a longer time, you can change the activity. And you want to do full body activities. So I know guys would like to bench press, for example, but that's cosmetic. But what about swinging kettlebells? Or what about taking you know, a bar and doing cleans with it? You know, what about doing push-ups, but varying the push-ups? You know, wide and narrow, those are the little things. And if you do it in such a, such a way where you minimize your rest, what happens is you quickly increase your heart rate, you get your heart stronger because it has to pump more blood throughout your body. Mm -hmm. And then you take a short break so your body can rest, but not enough to fully recover, right? To get all the way back to baseline and you challenge it again. So the heart actually gets stronger and you become fitter. And what happens is if you design the program just right, which we have, you're actually hitting multiple energy systems. Because fitness isn't just how you look, right? Fitness is a matter of, do you have good balance and coordination? Especially as you, you, you become more mature, you progress in age, things like that matter. So you wanna have a fitness program that will address that. Balance, flexibility, flexibility, coordination, power, explosiveness, right? So that, you're, so that it becomes practical in your daily life. Right, does that make sense? Yep. So that's what Max C3 is all about. So what we're gonna do here right now is for one minute, we're gonna exercise. So everybody stand up. I told you to bring your running shoes. Right? Do we have some music? Like some up tempo? <laughs> Sorry guys, I probably should have told you about that before. Do they? All right, so when we have some music, we're just gonna work out for, for one minute. One minute. You ready? I was doing that. No, no, we need some high intensity music. Oh my god, stop talking. You, you, your dad is? Me and my dad. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's my fault, I didn't tell them. Are you guys learning something? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna do foot fires. Who knows what a foot fire is? Just gonna run real fast. I need a timer, one minute. Give me, give me a phone. I need, I need to have a Alright, I got it. Are you watching? On my phone. Oh, I need the timer here. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Yes. Give me your best. Foot fire, ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Your best. Girl, what is that? Oh my goodness. Come on, come on, here we go, come on. How are we doing? I can't see anything back there. We're only 20 seconds in. Are you breathing hard? Yep. Yes. That was one minute. One minute. See, I'm breathing hard. <laughs> so here's the thing about that. When you're breathing hard, you're burning fat. And that type of workout increases the number of mitochondria in your cells. So those are the things that produce energy. So your body becomes more energetic, but you're burning fat at rest. So when you train like this, your body will burn fat 
for the next 48 to 72 hours while at rest. One minute. So do you need to go to the gym for an hour? No. You can if you want to, but you don't. Whew! Nice. That's good. All right, let's bring it home. What time is it? 7.53. Okay, time to land this plane. Balancing the nervous system. So, here's the bottom line. Your nervous system controls everything in your body, right? If you're a patient in this office, you've heard us say this a million times. So, if you're gonna heal the heart, you gotta start with the top down. The name of this practice is adial chiropractic, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Yep. Above, down, inside out. That's what it means. And it's not just talking about coming from the brain through the nerves out to the body. It actually has a higher meaning. It means coming from the creator, above, down, and inside out. That's, what you, that's really what it means. And so if you understand that, then you understand that the brain and the mind, your thoughts, are very powerful. Who here has ever been, you've had some thoughts, right? Let's say there was a phone call that you're supposed to make, and you know that there's going to be some confrontation in this phone call, right? And you thought about how you think the conversation is going to go. Well, when I call, right, I'm going to say this, and when I say this, they'll probably say this, and if they say this, I'm really going to get upset, and then I'll say this. Who's ever done that? Well, you, come on, everybody, come on, right? You've gone back and forth in your mind how you think this conversation is going to go, right? And you never think it's going to go well. And then you start having this whole dialogue in your mind about what the person is going to say, and it hasn't even happened. What happens to your body? Do you not find yourself clenching your teeth and getting upset? What do you think is happening to your blood pressure? It's going up. Your pulse rate is going up. Your body is just shifted into fight or flight and nothing's happened just because of your mind. That's how powerful our minds are. So if you understand that, if you have a very stressful, negative, glass half full mindset, listen, you may have that towards somebody else. That's why the Bible talks about being bitter and resentment, right? But at the end of the day, who do you hurt the most? Yourself. yourself. You hurt yourself. So the first key to really being healthy and healing your heart and preventing heart disease is what you think, your mind, on a daily basis, right? Renewing your mind every single day. Be being careful what you listen to and what you watch. In 2020, I'll be honest with you, I shut the news off. Oh, I am. I, you know, I, there were enough people around to tell me what was going on, yeah. right? People can't wait to deliver bad news, <laughs> right? So I didn't have to know. But what you think and what you meditate on and what you let into your mind and into your spirit affects your physiology. That's not even a debate. We know it's true. So that's number one. It's your mind, and so your thoughts will be expressed in your brain. Who's heard of Dr. Caroline Leaf before? Right? So Dr. Caroline Leaf, she talks about the fact that your thoughts will literally take up real estate in your mind. So as you start to think a thought, the longer you think it, your nerve cells will actually start to grow what's called dendrites. And, the, and they actually grow and they become little buds. And after about 67 year, uh, days, it actually expands. So that thought can now become real estate in your mind and then it starts to change your physiology and it produces what's called hormones of emotion. There's a Dr. Candace Perk that talks about this, that there are molecules of emotion. So based on your emotional state, there are certain molecules that are producing your body. And right then and there, you're changing your genetic expression. So you're switching on disease state genes and you're switching off healthy genes just by your thoughts. So that's the first place that it starts, okay? So this doctor, Dr. Cohen, um, he talks about the fact that the cause is the cure. He talks about that most heart attacks are not caused by diet, are not caused by lifestyle necessarily, well, indirectly, but they're caused by an imbalance in your central nervous system. Ooh. Right? Specifically the autonomic nervous system because they control the internal organs. So you know the nerve charts that we have around this, this office? Those nerve charts are of the autonomic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system is made up of the parasympathetics and the sympathetics. It's like the gas and brakes. So what happens is when we have a negative mindset or we have any stress, 
right? Mm -hmm. Our bodies require more energy to be able to handle that situation because your mind thinks that you either have to escape from something that's gonna hurt you or you have to defend yourself. And your mind doesn't know the difference between what's imagined and what's real. We just established that. You can create a whole fictional conversation in your head and change your whole physiology, right? So the problem is that that becomes a pattern of being. You start to engage your sympathetic nervous system and it's called sympathetic dominance. The problem is, is that it stresses out your heart, right? And as it stresses out your heart, it can actually start to cause irregular heartbeats. Something like a heart murmur, someone might say, well, I've had this ever since I was, ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. But they've been able to show that when a woman is pregnant with a child, that the state of that woman and the partner will influence the genetic expression and the physiology of that child. I saw this one video where there was a woman, she was pregnant, and they had an argument, and they were able through ultrasound to look at the baby, and the, and the father yelled at the wife, and the baby flinched when he yelled. So even what we say and do is influencing the neurology. And if you're influencing the neurology of a fetus, right, while they're still developing, do you think that can affect how their organs developed? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, God didn't create junk, we interfered with it. Make sense? So that's what this whole, that's what he's trying to say. So if you create an imbalance in the nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system is dominant, the longer it's there, the more your body breaks down. It's, it's catabolic, it breaks down your tissues. What it also does, it increases your heart rate, it increases your blood pressure, it decreases or downregulates your digestive system. That's why you start to have constipation, um, IBS, Crohn's disease. At the same time, it downregulates your reproductive system. So now it's difficult to conceive, right? For men and women, it affects the uh, production of sperm in men. It, it affects ovulation in women, just from that stress response. It affects your immune system. That's why 2020 was such a paradox. Because the more afraid you became, the weaker your immune system became. Right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what you wanna be able to do is to, is if you understand that, then you have to ask yourself, well, how do I get out of sympathetic dominance? How do I upregulate, so to speak, the parasympathetic nervous system? Well, that's where you know chiropractic comes in. That's where meditation and prayer comes in, and rest. Those are the three major things scientifically have been shown to upregulate your parasympathetic nervous system because that's called the rest and digest system. That's the system that actually heals your body, right? And it's, it goes to all the major organs. And it comes from the brainstem, by the way, through what's called the vagus nerve. So the next time you look at, at one of our charts, you'll see a blue nerve that comes off the top. That comes from the brainstem right up here by the atlas. So when, when I adjust your atlas, that bone up there, you're stimulating the vagus nerve. You're kicking on your parasympathetic nervous system. In that, man, in that moment, your heart is working better. It may need to speed up or slow down, but the point is it's working better, right? Your, your liver is working better. Your digestive system is working better in that moment because you're, you're rebalancing the nervous system. So that's the key to health. That was actually written about, I believe it was back in the, the 30s or 40s, and I have this book at home. His name is Dr. Sparansky, and he was a Russian doctor, and he talked about that way back when that the cause of disease is nerve interference. Medical doctor in Russia. The cause of disease is from nerve interference. Look to the nervous system for help. So that's what we do in this office. So every time you get an adjustment, you're balancing the nervous system. That's why in that study, the blood pressure went down. But that's also why we had a lady in here today, right? We, we videotaped videotape a testimonial where her, right? Her, what, I think she knows who she is. Her blood pressure went down. <laughs> Why are you sitting there like I'm not talking about you? She's like, I wonder who this person is. It's you, right? <laughs> it's me. Blood pressure's going down. Diabetes, going down. It's the whole five essentials, right? Because you're balancing the nervous system. How cool is that? Say very cool. Very cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Right? So there's balancing those two nervous systems. So now, what does that have to do with the spine? Because I think that's what, yeah, everything, thank you. Here's what it has to do with the spine. Do I get chocolate? Yes, you do. Well done, I love it. Yes. Well, you would like it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So the reason why the spine is so important is because it used to be thought that the spine was just this bony armor there to protect the nervous system. And quite frankly, for simplicity's sake, that's what I, that's not what I tell people, right? But it's actually more than that. In order for your brain to function, it actually needs movement from the spine. Dr. Dr. Roger Sperry won a Nobel Prize in science. And one of the things that he, he discovered is that 80% of the stimulation that our brains need to function comes from movement of your spine. So your brain, my brain, our brains need three things to work. It needs nutrients, so that's food, right? Water. It needs um, oxygen, and it needs stimulation. And 80% of the stimulation that your brain needs to run your body, to keep you alive, to be healthy, to keep you sane, comes from movement of your spine. So when your spine isn't moving properly, subluxation, you're actually robbing the brain of the important stimulation. And what it does, it throws the brain out of balance. That's another reason why exercise is also so important. And when the brain goes out of balance, guess what it goes into? Sympathetic or parasympathetic dominant? Sympathetic, thank you for your answer, whoever said anything, which was nobody. <laughs> right, you see that? So when your spine is subluxated, out of alignment, bad posture, it's not first and foremost about the nerves being pinched going out to the organs. It's actually first and foremost about the brain not being able to perceive what's going on. So literally what happens, this is what happens to the brain when you're subluxated. Your brain is unaware as to what's going on in your body. So your brain's ability to perceive the internal and external environment is compromised. Not absolutely, but it's compromised. So when you're walking around with bad posture, your brain thinks that's right because it's not getting the feedback. It doesn't know that, it's, that that's wrong. When your heart isn't working properly and your blood pressure is all, all over the place, it's because your brain isn't aware what's going on with your heart. There's interference. When you're you guys get the idea. So when you get an adjustment, what the adjustment does first, more than taking pressure off a nerve, it actually balances your brain and reboots your brain, and, right, like a computer. And when you reboot the brain, the brain literally says, ah, I can actually perceive and understand what's going on in the body. That's why for one person, I can adjust them, not you necessarily, I can adjust one person and their blood pressure goes down. I do the same adjustment, like say the same area, and the blood pressure is not the problem, migraines go away. I go to somebody else and thyroid function is restored. I go to another person and the asthma goes away. I go to yet another person and they sleep better or they get off of antidepressants or their digestive system works better or you guys get the idea? So the adjustment doesn't treat the symptom or the disease, it restores the integrity of the nervous system so that the innate intelligence that God put in the body can be fully expressed to heal the body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's not for me. That's, that's not called, for me. That's called yay God. Yes. Yeah. That's what we're working with. Tell me which drug on the planet can do that. None. None. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Right? Sorry, I get so fired up and excited, I lose my mind a little bit, right? <laughs> but no drug can do that. So we're not the hero. You know what I mean? It's just we understand these principles so we can guide you, but you're the hero. Because you're the one who does the healing. I've never healed anybody, nor can I. There's no man or woman on the planet who's ever healed anybody. It's impossible. Even the surgeon who cuts you and repairs your heart doesn't heal it. Right? Because once I give you a bypass, the body still has to heal from that surgery. Which, by the way, real quick, do you know what happens when you have a blocked artery, in the, a coronary artery in the heart? I saw a video on this on YouTube. Your heart will grow collaterals around it to bypass. 
your heart does its own bypass. Your body does. Did you guys know that? It does its own bypass. Gout, you know why people get gout? Because the innate intelligence of the body says the uric acid is bad for the heart, so they push it to the extremities. That's why you have gout in your toes, to preserve your heart. Have you ever heard of cancer in the heart? No. Because the heart, the body won't allow toxins in the heart. That's the beauty of innate intelligence. So just because we don't understand it doesn't mean it doesn't serve a purpose. Right? So who are we to decide we're going to dictate that? Your body was created to fight viruses. It was. That's how God created it. Your body is more than 50% than viruses and bacteria, more than human cells. There's actually a symbiotic relationship of viruses and bacteria and cells in your body. But when you throw that out of balance by our lifestyle, guess what happens? We become vulnerable. And then we become prone to, in to infections. Yeah, when you take Tylenol for a fever that your body is doing naturally to fight the virus, you're breaking the balance of your body to fight that virus. I, so here's the bottom line. Well said. Here's the bottom line. Action steps. Did you guys learn something tonight? Yes. I went a little bit long, but we're done. Yeah. Okay? Good. Good. I left some stuff out because I was like, okay, that's too much. I'm, we'll be here for two hours. And I can see these guys looking at me already. I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel Emily like this right here. I can feel the lazy. It's actually fine. <laughs> I'm just having fun with you. So here's the deal. A few things, action steps. Because this is what happens. I've been doing this now for 22 years of practice, two decades. And there was a point in time when I would do talks and I would hear, oh, that's a great talk. Thanks, Dr. White, that's an awesome talk. And no one changed anything. Nothing changed, I got tired of it. So it's, it's not about the applause, it's not about great talk. It's like action, action steps, right? Mm -hmm. So number one, if you're a guest there, get your nervous system checked. We do it at a discount, okay? So get it, get your nervous system checked. You don't have to become a patient in this office, but you understand, if you understand what I just said, Right? You'd want to get your nervous system checked to see if you have a problem. That's number one. The second thing there is that we, have, we want you to plug in and participate. What does that mean? How many of you know that there are people that should have been here tonight that you know personally? As you're sitting there, raise your hand if you thought, man, this is like one person that I could think of that probably needed to hear this, right? So we have a patient appreciation week coming up, June, I know you did, but I forgot. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 did I put it in here? It's in here, hold on, hold on. But I'm so proud, hold on. I'll let, you, I'll let you say that. I did it myself, look at this. Oh. Friends and family week. I Good did job. that, guys, I did that. <laughs> June 7th yeah. to 11th. Now, um, how that works is that if you have any family or friends that you would like to refer into the office to be evaluated, we charge you a nominal fee, but we don't keep the money, we give it to a charity. And there's one ministry in particular, uh, Pastor um, Lori Wong, who's a good friend of mine, and she's worked tirelessly really providing um, food and clothing to people who are less fortunate in the Pauline, uh, sorry, the Powder Springs area. And so she has a ministry called Reflections of Ministry. And so I wanna be able to support her that week. So if anyone that you know, you'd like to refer them into the office, start working on them now, they can come in, we set appointments aside, and at the very least, if you come in and get checked out and you never pursue it, you're helping a good cause. That's number one. The second thing is, is that we're going to do a makeover. So who's been to a makeover before? I know a few of you have, right? You have too. So makeovers are awesome. It's like a flagship program in Max Living. And I've done countless number of makeovers. And so basically, that's where we take you and we help you get to the next level. So we dive deeper into the other essentials, okay? So usually, you know, we can't fit it in here, so we do it off-site, and uh, the location is to be announced. In other words, we haven't found one yet, <laughs> but we will. Um, and, you know, the ones that I've been a part of before, we've had as much as 200 people there, right? We have small ones, we have 200 people there, and uh, it's just life-changing. So it's mainly for you, who are practice members, but also your family and friends. And you walk out of there being empowered and transformed. Now you still gotta do something, right? 
So that's, that's coming up in the date right there. The other thing I did put on there is, uh, I think it's on one of the slides here, um, is that we're gonna do a challenge, a 30 day challenge. Yeah, so um, we did have it, so I need to go back. Yeah. All right, oh yeah, there it is. We're gonna do a 30 day challenge. So now, if this is where we now hold your feet to the fire. So for 30 days, and we'll let you know when we're gonna start, for 30 days, I want us to, and I'll do it with you, I want us to commit to 30 days of eating a certain way, specifically the advanced plan, or you can do the core plan. So those of you who are patients, you have the Align Your Health book. So chapter four talks about the advanced plan and core plan. It's just a healthier way to eat. If you have any questions, you can ask us. For 30 days, we wanna do that, okay? And for 30 days, at the same time, you're gonna work out. So we wanna do max T3 or something similar. So again, if you have the Align Your Health book, there's a bookmark in there, and there's a, a code that you can go onto to the website and download Max T3 workouts, okay? So we want you guys to do that with us. We might create a Facebook group, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there, just so we can support one another. But at the end of it, we wanna have some stories. We may even decide to have like a little get together and have some food on me, just so we can celebrate the wins, okay? And so the win for some people might be losing weight. For some people, it might be, hey, I just feel more alive and energetic. For some people, you're gonna come off of medications. For some of you, you're gonna come off your blood pressure medications. For some of you, your A1C levels are gonna go down. For some of you, you're gonna have more energy than you've had ever before, right? So that's what we wanna do. Sounds excited? So definitely, if you guys wanna participate, we're gonna do it together, it's gonna to be great, okay? So some of the resources that we have, let me just backtrack real quick. So um, some of those bundles, you can see them up there. Uh, cardiovascular bundles, so you have the cholesterol balance. So it says it right there. So it helps to balance your cholesterol if that's an issue. High blood pressure is gonna help support. We talked about the nitric acid er earlier. The BP support also has um, uh, the um, arginine in there, I believe. No, the arginine is by itself. I forget what's in the beet. I think that has the beets, right? That has the beets in there. Um, and then we have the blood vessel support. So we've got the resources that you want. Um, if we don't have them here, you can talk to the team and they can, pre they can order them for you. And I believe we're offering a discount. Yes, we're doing pre-order. Um, any supplements is gonna be 15% off. If you get one of the bundles, it'll be 20% off. Okay, so you can do that tonight. And uh, um, if you have any questions, good. So any questions before we end? So this was pretty clear to everybody. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, it was a lot of fun. And uh, man, I just wanna hear some testimonials come out of this. Right, so I want to see you guys. I just want people to win. Right, I want to hear a story. I want that blue zone that we talked about. Can you guys help me make that, please? Let's start a blue zone, three to five mile rate, five to ten mile radius of Adio Chiropractic Kennesaw. You guys in? Oh, yeah. You in? All right, great. Thank you guys. Have a good